This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. He said, uh, "Let's get this over with." I've got plans. That's, That's Stephen right. Curl. Yeah, things, things to do. I gotta hit the town, baby. The big town. Yeah. Your town, my town, our town, a hell of a town. I have a coat with two pair of plans. That's what? I have a coat with two pair of plans. Oh, there we go. Coat with two pair of plans. No, a coat oh, with yeah, two yeah, pair yeah. of pants. That's an uh, old. Right. It's They're doing yard work out here, so it's a little hard to hear. Yeah. No, I was doing, uh, I was doing uh, Ch- Chico marks. Oh, Chico marks. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no, he said, you know, I got, uh, got a coat. And two, you, do you have a plan? He said, I have a coat and two pair of plans. Two pair of plans. Yeah, plans. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Let me turn on my lights here. Uh, uh, we will, uh, we will do that interview in a couple of days. The reason I started it was because uh, Phil wasn't here. But now Phil is here. I hope he has a good excuse for not being here on time for our little for our gathering. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me see here. Let me go to, um, there we go. Hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? What happened to you tonight? Well, uh, I went out to dinner. I laid down for a few minutes, and uh, I, I was snoring. It, it felt really good. <laughs> yeah. I just woke up. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. I started something else going because, you know, I you know I started the interview there uh, with uh, Stephen Pearl because ah. yeah. But now I cut it once it started, and we'll play it another day and deal with you. But well, sounds good. Yeah. But how so, dare you, you, you know, because I was worried about you because you're very good about this sort of thing. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe I, you know, I, I said, oh, geez. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I woke up and uh, I said, what's the time? Yeah. 34. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, but you're usually always there. And I kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And I figured as my backstop, I would yeah. run the interview with Stephen Pearl. But we'll save that for another day now. But I ran a little bit of it, so everybody hears the first minute or so of it. But uh, ah, okay. Yeah. And well, then, and then on top of it, uh, I'm not here recording it, but uh, my streaming of the show I started late. Ah, well, uh, you, I've been screwing up well, like crazy. I, I, yeah, I'm screwing I up. I'm screwing, I'm screwing up so much lately that I'm really thinking of packing it in. I really am. I just I can't keep doing this if I can't. Remember how A follows B follows C follows D, you know? You know, uh, but you see, uh, I believe that by doing this kind of stuff, it keeps up your cognitive. No, but uh, I get really depressed when this, you know what I got depressed about tonight? Yeah. So I get an email and it's from the post office department. Very official, USPS, all the bells and whistles, copyright United States post office, the whole thing. Yeah. And it you says be, we've been trying. We've been trying to deliver a a piece of mail to you since the seventh of uh, of last month, and we haven't been able to. Would you please give us your current address? So I type it in. I go to their little site, and there there it is. USPS, the whole thing, and I I fill it out. I give them my address and my phone number, and then it says your email. I give them my email, and they say password. Oh, oh. Well, at that point, instead of giving them my real password. Yeah. I gave them an old password, the one I've been using for years that I've stopped using because it's been it's been compromised. All yes. right. So, uh, but so I gave them that. And then all of a sudden I realized the return address on it was France. Well, wow. the United States Post Office doesn't work in France, but usually I've been pretty good at catching these things. But this thing looks so real. I, I know they, they clone the website. Yeah. Uh, the same thing happened to me with uh, eBay. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
because I was trying to register my bank and just about the same time, yeah. <clears throat> I get this email asking me for uh, information and I gave it to them. I started to give it to them and then I realized, I said, you know, I, I better call eBay and ask them if this is real. Yeah. Uh, and sure enough, it wasn't. It was but that made, me, that made me feel real old tonight because usually I catch those things. But this well, thing was so, you know, number one, I am expecting a package. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's my medicine from Costco, but they don't have trouble with my address. Uh, but it comes through USPS. Okay. Uh, and I happen to be looking it up today because I wanted to make sure it was on its way. And uh, so I was aware USPS was doing that. And so I didn't even stop to think that this was like, you know, fishing. I guess right. it's what this was. You know, it's not like they're going to hold me for ransomware or whatever. Well, I finally realized, so they've got my name, Bennett Schwarzman. They've got my address and my phone number, okay? Yeah. Ooh, that's terrible, isn't it? I went yeah. online, yeah, and I looked up Bennett Schwarzman, and there's right. my address and my phone number. So it's not information they can't get readily off the web. Sure. Okay. And yeah. so far as my so far as my email is concerned, they can get that any number of places as well. Right. It's uh, the password. That, it's the uh, password, and the password I gave them was one that uh, I just don't use anymore. But I figured they, they just needed a password so they could send me a two-factor thing or whatever, and they it never came through. Yeah. You know. So, I mean, they've got my information, but I don't think they're going to use it for anything nefarious because they could get that information without having to send me. Well, uh, so I, I registered at the bank once yeah. I, so I did that. And mm -hmm. sure enough, my email mm -hmm. and password, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, or my email, I don't know that I gave them my password. I really don't think I did. But my email showed up on the dark web and had been showing up and showing up and i didn't do anything about it well i bought something from adorama well, wait a minute, wait a minute. to begin with where is the dark web will you tell me I, that? I, I couldn't see it well how it's, do you find out if something is on the dark web you use a flashlight but uh yeah I, I don't know i have no idea where the dark web is how to get there well how uh, did you find out you were on the dark web uh, I, I signed up for this uh, thing through my bank uh, that monitors uh, all sorts of stuff. And uh, so... So your uh, email address winds up on the dark web. Is that an email address that I can't find somewhere? Uh, not anymore because I, I had to cancel it, and I'll tell you why. Why? It was my best email address. It was my name... Uh, Phil Meyer at Comcast.net, but I can't use that because it's uh, why you not? Know. Why not? Well, I'll tell you why. I so I order something from Adorama. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody in uh, in the uh, Thailand, not or or in the, it wasn't Thailand. It was somewhere in the Orient. Uh, redirected the package or tried to redirect the package be, uh, because I was using that email address. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that it was stopped is that Adorama said, um, based on the way I paid for it or something, that they couldn't redirect internationally this shipment. And so they got a hold of me. So what I realized was uh, they were able to see my order. Mm -hmm. They were able to try to redirect it, and it was only because of Adorama's security that mm -hmm. I uh, knew, uh, found out about it, and said, "No, no, no, don't, don't send it there," and uh, was able to circumvent that uh, that ripoff. Mm -hmm. But so I, I don't, I don't know how they do it, why they, what yeah, they but what do. could they do with your email? I still can't figure out what they could do with your email to, to redirect a pack. They got a notice just like I did that uh you know that i had ordered something and they redirected the shipment or tried to uh to have it delivered to their address or a place where they could get it rather than uh well than okay mine. at adorama you have an account right right yeah. uh is, is, Ad, is that account uh, just your email address or is that account also have a password associated with it, it has a password but they were able to see everything 
What do you uh, mean? They, but they couldn't see your password at Adorama. Uh, I, I understand. They, Unless they Adorama has become compromised. Uh, maybe. Then but maybe that I, was I, it. And they I've just had email address since about 1997. And uh, see, was, I, I don't see where the email address would screw you over. Well, uh, something screwed me over because they were able to see my order and they tried to redirect it. Mm. So uh, at that point, I realized this isn't any good. And uh, every, every month uh, prior to that, uh, I would get a report and, I, uh, you know, your email is on the dark web. And, you yeah, know, but you have... be, I still don't know. Look, if Alex at GabNet.net, okay, I just said it to everybody out there. Yeah. How are they going to be able to use it unless they've got a password for it? Uh, they, ha they must have had my password. I mean, in fact, you want to let people know what your password is because you write them. You want them to write you back at philmeyer at comcast.net net or whatever and uh you want them to do that so right. so you give out your email all the time what you don't give out is your password now i gave out my password but i gave them my old password i didn't get my new password so they I can't get onto that account if they want to go into it on this phishing thing i must have given them something yeah, and I used to use stupid passwords that, you know, oh, were hold easily... Hold on a second, I want to get my earphones straightened out here. Yeah. So so some of the passwords I used to use was the, um, you know, the, the, the regular, you know, the regular ones. And, you know, there was one, two, three of them. And I used the same ones over and over and over. I used and, one for 20 years? Yeah. Yeah, I used the same one for 20 years. See, I don't care... Uh, if it's, it's Bubbles line, but I, I don't care if they try to steal my identity, then they'll have no life, you know? Right. When they try to steal your stuff, then you get a little upset. Well, there's not much they can do. I, they can't get into my bank because I made sure I have a, a, a password there that they don't have. They can't use. Uh, and I changed all the things where money was concerned. Sure. Okay. So if they try any of those accounts, but, you know, I don't want to have to think up too many passwords, to be honest with you. Okay. Do you use that thing that Rob told you about, that key or whatever? It's, it's one pass? Or? Uh, yeah, but, you know, some of those things are so, I don't know, maybe it's just I'm old, but they're, they're, they're really a pain in the ass. Because uh, I, I was using, uh, what is it, Dashlane. Okay. And I still have it. I still pay for it. But it, it, it's a pain in the ass. Every time I go, it wants to put in the dash lane stuff. And I don't want necessarily that. And it's asking me too many questions. And I, I don't want that. You know, so, I mean, and then those other ones, they give you like, a, you know, a password that's long and involved and then nobody else can get it. But if you don't keep paying those people money. Right. Then you're stuck. Then you're stuck. Okay, yeah. so, you know, I mean, I have my own passwords. My new password is much like my old password, only there's a capital letter and there's a there's a uh, at sign on it and so on. And if that one goes bad, I'll change to something. I'm trying to think of something new to yeah. change all of my passwords to. I, and, you know, then you get a thing from uh, like uh, I got a thing from Microsoft or something that mm -hmm. says, uh, this password is being used on all of these websites or, or all of these sites, mm -hmm. uh, you know, come up with a new password. And, uh, and, and that was some sort of internal thing from Microsoft. See, I don't care for most of my stuff, whether they have my password or not. You know, when it comes to my bank, I made sure I changed that one. In fact, I can't even remember what I changed it to. Do I have it here? Hold well, on a second. And I won't bring it up. But I, I have to check. But I do have my passwords for all my, the bank, and my password for a lot of, like, oh, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, PayPal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. PayPal, I had a problem where some kid out in Hong Kong 
got my address or something and was able to buy through, uh, through uh, PayPal. And I got a hold of PayPal and I said, how do they do this? And they said, we don't know, but you know, you're not responsible for it. And they stopped payment on it and demanded money back from the company that took the money from them. Yeah. Well, uh, you were, hmm? uh, and it was only, it was only for like a hundred dollars or something like that, but still, you know, usually, usually when they're fishing and they're trying something like a, a, a stolen credit card, they'll do something uh, like for a dollar. And, uh, then, uh, all of a sudden there'll be, you know, 50 charges. And once they find out that the card is good, then, uh, you know, and you might not notice that $1 no. charge. I, I don't know anybody. Uh, and I asked my business manager this, too, because I said, Do you, you, you handle a lot of people. I have a lot of money, a lot of credit cards. Okay. How many of them have been compromised? He said, every one of them. Right. You know, one time or another. So I, I, I've been pretty lucky. Mine, haven't been, mine hasn't been compromised. But uh, at one point we thought it might be, so we, we changed the credit card. Big deal. Yeah. You know. Uh, Plus, the bank takes responsibility for a lot of uh, that that kind of stuff. But I don't know, you know, but I just felt really bad that I answered all these questions and gave it to them, not saying to myself, this looks fishy, because it didn't look fishy until after I did that, and I looked at the address, and it was like right. France. Well, I, I've learned that I said to myself, if anybody is asking me for information... Uh, you got to look at the address before you start giving it to them. Yeah. Now, I don't always live up to that standard. You know, uh, you forget, and uh, and it has nothing yeah. to do uh, with with age or losing your cognitive ability. These guys are good. They're good at yeah, ripping. Well, well, here here's the other thing. I uh, I with with the post office. I'm signed up for their notifications and stuff like that. So I, this was only connected. natural that I would right. get this kind of thing, and it looked legitimate. Uh, it I finally, what I did is I took the address that they had, and I sent a message to them that said, fuck you, and <laughs> immediately it came back to me. They had wow. it so it would route around that you couldn't write directly to that. It would write back to your own address. Yes, I understand that. You know, I, I've had that happen to me, uh, you know, where I've sent somebody something, and it it came back to me yeah. uh and so then i sent it from another address mm -hmm. and it went through oh really uh, yeah yeah uh, i was complaining about something and uh so i, I sent my the first one went from my maybe photo. I should, maybe i should do it and send it via one of my other accounts you know that wasn't well, the account that they sent it to yeah but on the other hand maybe you're better off not having any more contact with uh, people that are this nefarious. Well, I mean, I don't know what they want out of me. Uh, they want your stuff. Mm. You know, just just like just like uh, you know me, but I I actually gave them enough that I wound up on the dark web. I I gave I'm you know I I remember typing in something and uh, you know uh, it was you know once I realized that I had been duped uh, I. I was I was beside myself, uh, but you know I I didn't think it was as bad as as it turned out to be, which mm. was uh, I was on the dark web, uh, but uh, you know I paid like eight dollars or eleven dollars a month for you know some sort of uh, uh, monitoring protection. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it through my bank. It wasn't the one that you hear advertised all the time. That oh we'll give a million dollars. You know, for your identity theft, but uh, it was something like that. And uh, every every uh, every time they reported, I'd get an email that said, "You know, we've scanned, and your your email address is on the dark web." So I called Comcast. Yeah, but I want to know where this dark web is. What do they mean by the dark web? I don't know. It probably they. It's probably the dark web. It's up. A, it's like an old joke I had when I was fourteen years old. The dark yeah. web, it's up a spider's ass. Yeah, you know. It really uh, is. Huh? Well, it's where they trade Bitcoin and do all sorts of, they, they sell drugs and, and all sorts well, of things. Well, that's something else we got we to go, do away with or fight. And, that, and I know a lot of people are going to yell at me for saying this is Bitcoin. And I'm going to tell you why.
because it's only its main usage is for illegitimate transactions of money. Yes. You know, you know if 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 the if they had themselves somewhat open so mm -hmm. that it, it could be uh you know, uh what's the word I'm looking for? Uh uh, uh, uh traced. Uh, huh? Traced, I think. Traced or I mean that you could um uh vet mm -hmm. the money and so on. That would be a different story, but you can't. You know, I mean, the fact is it's only being used for drugs and uh, what else, you know? Well, I don't know. Tesla's starting to take it for the purchase of their cars. Well, that's very nice. But, yeah. you know, what are they doing? Selling drugs on the side? I don't know. Hey, I always figured I only had two two bits to rub together, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. I only had two bits to rub together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. my mother-in-law always said to me, I would never amount to anything. He's probably not going to have two bits he can rub together. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I just it just pisses me off the whole goddamn thing. You know, I mean, I, I I'm tired of having to constantly protect myself against this stuff. You know, there was a time when you didn't have to worry about any of this. Well, there was a time that everything on the Internet was free. You know, I, I was I was hungry this afternoon. I've done now, a there was really a time before the internet, okay? Oh yeah. When none of this happened. Yeah, but where you if you were gonna get robbed it was at gunpoint. Yeah, but do you, you remember know? when the internet first came out, everything was free and everybody said, there's no way you can monetize this. And uh, and and you, you could look up anything. Now, as soon as you try to look something up, they want you to subscribe. They want you to give money. They want you to hit okay, the bell. Here, I got a question for you. Yeah. So Biden goes, he talks to Putin. He says, if you don't stop this stuff, because Putin claims he has nothing to do with it. This list of 16. What it's happening is it's going on in his country. And there isn't anything he doesn't have control of in that country. OK, but anyway, I, I don't so, think that that's a reasonable uh, basis of uh, uh, of assumption. You, you you know, look, if you look at this country uh, now, there are some Phil, things. Phil, Phil, it is oh. a good basis of assumption because look at them. All right. Look at the Soviet Union. Look how it's controlled. Look how it's, you know, it, it, forget it. He, he if he if he if you if he wanted to stop this ransomware from going on even though he isn't doing it himself okay he could stop it tomorrow with a bullet you know i mean he could all right he, no but hey look in china uh some guy looked at a website i just i just read about it he looked at a website and i forgot what it was about but they killed him uh so there, yeah, there are yeah yeah so so come on putin if if you're an evil horrible guy just be evil and horrible and get rid of of, of, yeah, of this there's, crap. there's nothing in it right? for him to to do that what, what's in it for him but but, but anyway the point i'm making here's the point i make so biden says to him well this has got to stop and if it continues we're going to retaliate how are we going to retaliate number one we're not very good at this sort of thing now we're great at technology Okay, but we're not very good at hacking because while we were busy building technology, we weren't hacking. All right. right. These no. guys are like a whole industry sitting in right. Moscow or, or or some one of those satellite countries uh, uh, spending their whole day doing ransomware heists and nobody's stopping them. How did Trump retaliate? He didn't. Yes, he did. He no, put he didn't. Sanctions. He kissed Putin's fucking ass. There were more sanctions on Russia under Trump. Than, no, there weren't. No, there weren't. He was playing nice, nice with with with. Uh, I don't think so. Is he played nice, nice with one hand and sanctioned them with the other? Yeah. But that's the way you do it: is you sanction uh, uh, and you and you and you put tariffs and you uh, embargo. Uh, countries from dealing with them, yeah. mm -hmm. and that hurts them economically. And then uh, the guy will turn around. We're not a country that uh, if you but, hack us, we're going to hack yeah, well, you. Well, I'm saying we don't really know how to do that kind of hacking. You know, and we, what we should, we should have done a few years ago. You know, at one point it was a great story. Years ago, the United States needed to build up a marijuana supply 
for medicinal purposes and for testing and to see what the drug was all about. Wasn't that uh, stuff uh, synthetic? No, no. They went out and they found people they had busted for growing pot. And they said, you won't get thrown in jail. Just come work for the government and grow us some of your finest shit. Well, that's All right? the way they... With, and and uh, that's how we learned a lot about the growing of marijuana. Okay. We should have done the same thing. We should do the same thing with hackers. We should get the best hackers in America. When, as you bust them, you tell them it's either jail or you go to an office in Washington, D.C. and start hacking Russia. Now, don't we already do stuff like that? No. Uh, you, you remember there was a movie about a guy that used to write uh, bad checks and he was uh, go all over the world uh, pretending he was an airline pilot and he was this and he was that. Uh, it was with Leonardo DiCaprio. Do you, uh, do you remember that movie? No. Mm -mm. Uh, all right. Well, uh, eventually, I guess the FBI hired him uh, mm -hmm. to uh, the, the real guy, Frank Al Albernathy or something. They, they hired him uh, to find out how he did these things. Really? Yeah. So I, I believe that, you know, they, they use hackers that, you know, we have had hackers in this country and they use them to try to counter mm -hmm. uh, other threats. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I was going to tell you one other thing. I, I, went, to, I went to a McDonald's drive through today. I was hungry, and I, I, my sugar must have been low, and, and it was right there. Mm -hmm. So I, I go through, and, the, and I said, okay, give me a Big Mac. And the woman says to me, it's $5 and something, but it, do you have the McDonald's app? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I don't have the McDonald's app. And she says, well, if you have the McDonald's app, it's a dollar less. And I said, no, nah, I'm not getting the McDonald's app. Just give me my shitty burger. <laughs> Let me go. Yeah, I didn't say shitty. But, uh, so are they trying to push the McDonald's app on you? Right, because what's happening is, is they're trying to uh, use less people because they can't hire anybody. I'm in the same position, but the McDonald's, if you go in side, they have kiosk. And you, you press the buttons, and uh, probably eventually, if you have the McDonald's app, it knows what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you go in, you you put your ID in, and mm -hmm. it says this is your normal meal. And and they're going to be getting rid of uh, people and doing this over the internet. Wow. But you go into Safeway, you go into Whole Foods, you show an ID. You know, uh, at at Whole Foods, they have a uh, thing that you get some discounts at the register. Same with Safeway. And so they know what you've bought, when you've bought it, who you are, what your shopping patterns are. Mm -hmm. And do you think that they're not using this information to, uh, to sell? Oh, uh, to by, the way, by the way, I got something. I read something today, and I passed it on to Rob, for instance, because he uses the program. If yeah. you, do you use a program uh, called Audacity? Uh, I don't use it because I have uh, I have the uh, Adobe one, but I don't know how to use that one either. You no, know, I do. I well, of course I know how to use it because. But anyway, I, I used Audacity on a couple of occasions. I I, I didn't free. You, didn't. It's, it's, it's free. It's a it's a what they call a uh, free source. Uh, yeah, uh, open source. Right. Um, so I uh, what happened is they found out the company was bought up by another company, another company. They're selling all your information. That there, yeah. it it is literally it. It's uh, now kind of spyware that looks wow. into your machine, tells what your machine does, tells what you buy, things like that. Passes it on to Russia. Wow, you know, in California. So if you got audacity on your machine, or the audacity to have audacity on your machine, take it off. Even right now, we're doing our program. While we're there, just go into wherever you go and remove Audacity from your machine. Wow. So that's also a way they can get all yep. of your stuff. Yep. And and then hack so you. So how do you know that is what Mac and what Mac, what uh, uh, McDonald's isn't trying to do? <laughs> Audacity to sell me a Big Mac for five eighty nine. Did you know five eighty nine? Yeah, for a Big Mac, you should stay away from those anyway. They're not good. Oh food. yeah, I, I, you know, and I've been doing a really good job of doing that. Mm -hmm. And but uh, today, I, 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 you know, succumb to my weakness. Yeah. And uh, 
Uh, but but uh, anyway, I felt like an idiot doing this today, and I hope it doesn't come back to bite me in the ass, but I can't see how it will, except maybe I might get a lot of spam, a lot of, you know, uh, yeah. loaded up mail in my box, you well, know. You can get one of those services, you just pay by the month, and uh, for seven or eight bucks, and they'll monitor all that stuff. And then if you, you know, if you find that you've uh, got something that's out there that you don't want to be out there, you, you know, you can get rid of it. Yeah, uh, but uh, what I'm saying is, is that uh, uh, the worst that can happen is I get a lot of email, you know, and the point is that email address is on my fucking website for crying out loud. Yeah. But you know. uh, I understand. And you were smart enough to to give them a, a, a phony, uh, well, an out of date, out of date password. But yeah. I didn't think about that. I just thought that pa they just wanted a password, so I gave yeah. them the old one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But just to come up with a it, password. I swear to you, if I showed you the piece of mail, I could show people the piece of mail. It is. It looks so authentic. It, it's ridiculous. eBay thing that I fell for was an exact replica of the eBay site, uh, the, uh, you know, the eBay site when you, when you uh, do things. With Why them. doesn't eBay uh, do something about that? They're as powerless as Putin, <laughs> you know? What do you mean? Uh, I, I don't think Putin is powerless. Please don't call a guy who literally is the richest man in the world because he robs from everybody in his country. Uh, 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 you know, just a poor guy is a sucker. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I've run out Look, of time here. You know that Russia has the economy that's no bigger than Italy. Well, uh, unless you're Putin. Yeah, uh, well, that's because everything he, they do is quickly, on the dark here, web. Here's what, no, here's what Putin did. He simply went to all the oligarchs and said, you don't want to get arrested. You give me like 20% of your income. And he gets like 20% of the income of all these oligarchs every year. He's worth something like Supposedly, he's worth over two hundred billion dollars. Wow! Yeah. Anyway, and next that, come out, he'll come out with a, a social yeah. platform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be more. Right. Hey, <laughs> listen, be we better we better go because uh, oh. it's uh, it's important that I get to these other people. Oh, sorry, I was late. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, but rare. you know, I enjoy talking with you, so that's why we keep talking with you. All right, I enjoy. Any, it anyway, uh, goodbye. We'll see you later. Hey, have a great talk show. Talk down the backside. Uh, and I'll call you at home and talk to you. See, don't All right. Yeah. All right. Bye. Anyway, sorry, folks, that that went a little long. But, you know, I think it was an important discussion that we were having there. I think it's important that you all uh, had a chance to hear it, you know. But uh, I'll start admitting all the people who want to get on today and talk about stuff. And uh, here they come. Oh, and it's a, it's a nice little batch of people. Uh, there's Jeff. He's, we see half of Jeff's head. Get yourself. There we go, Jeff. Um, uh, we've got Brian Ludwig. He's here. And we got uh, Alan here. And we've got Vernon Nunn here. Are you, you're back home now, right? Vernon? Yes. I'm uh, sitting in my Lazy Boy recliner. Even if it does say Ann Nunn, it's me. L L Lazy Boy recliner. Boy, I, I, I like the name Ann. Yeah, and of course uh, there's uh, there's Charlie Wallace and there's uh, Trucker Steve. What is that, Trucker Steve? You've got some kind of. Thing. I was in the hospital for four days. You were in the hospital. Oh, you said you were going in, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was in the hospital because my kidneys were failing. What? Oh no! Sorry to hear that. So what did you they didn't do? Say it was serious when you told us. About my God! Until you posted it on on Facebook, I didn't know. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I was. Um, yeah, I almost died. Oh, I'm sorry. To hear wow! Right. Wow. wow! Wait a minute. Tell us about this a little and bit. This is um, uh, for dialysis. Uh, it's only temporary. It's going to be removed in a couple of days, mm -hmm. and then I'll have something put in my chest, and then mm -hmm. for the next six weeks. I uh, will go three times a day, or uh, three times a week, yeah. to the hospital for dialysis, and then after six weeks, they will insert a, uh, a decatheter in my belly button, which I will do dialysis at home until I have a transplant available. Oh boy! Oh damn! Wow! So my uh, my 
career as a truck driver is essentially over. Because you can't you can't drive with it'll jostle those kidneys all to hell. Do you think that had anything to do with it? Yeah, the the, the lifestyle of the you know eating bad food and just not being active enough and sitting on your ass for twelve to fourteen hours a day. Wow. Just wow. Stuck. Wow, I'm sorry. I didn't. What, you know, I, I I don't pay attention like uh, like Charlie does to all the other people here. You know, I don't check the internet to see what they're doing or whatever. And but Charlie does. Charlie's very good about that. I'm, I'm retired. So. <laughs> so am I. But you know, uh, look at me. Um, but healthy looking. He doesn't stop at McDonald's because he's diabetic and eat the the, the worst. Thing, all carbs and a couple little slivers of meat. It broke my heart because I had to give up Big Mac. Uh, I, I haven't had, I haven't had, you know, I've had carbs, but not a lot of carbs. You know, uh, I don't eat anything with sugar in it. I don't eat any ice cream or anything like that. I'm pretty much, I'm like a diabetic. I don't take, uh, you know, like that. Yeah. yeah, boring. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's boring. I mean, you know. Maybe if my doctor told me you got three months to live, I'd start eating hot fudge sundaes, you know. I wouldn't worry about my weight, you know, about my sugar content and whatever. I don't worry about my weight either. Yeah. I weigh 300 pounds. I'm already fat. Yes, Brian. Uh, regarding, uh, I apologize, I don't, I don't what, what is his name? The man who runs Trucker that. Steve. Trucker Steve. Uh, I do remember when I was going to CDL school back in 2009 into 2010, that was a gentleman. Now he, as I vaguely recall, he seemed to be in a, a little better shape than uh, Trucker Steve, but he did say that he was on dialysis and that they were able to recruit him for more local runs and whatnot. Uh, as long as, so, so he would be, it, it would balance out with his, uh, you know, well, lifestyle of having to get to a dialysis machine. Yeah, dialysis yeah machine. apparently it, it sounds like they now have it so that you can do it at home, you know. It's a do-it-yourself thing, right, Steve? Yeah, they have a machine where you could just basically, you do it at night when you're going to bed. Oh, okay. Does it keep you the day free? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could probably do it in the truck, but okay, I, look, no. Forget about the truck for the time being. But for right now, you got to recover, I understand. How did you find out that you suddenly had this problem? I mean, did it... Uh, from the past month, I've been feeling a little ill. Mm -hmm. um, and... It just gradually got worse. Um, Ill in what way? Uh, just, I would vomit just randomly out for no apparent oh, fucking that, reason. that's pleasurable for everybody around you. Um, yes. I, I, I'd be driving down the road and literally would just vomit. You know, I did this. Wow. I'd up while driving down the road. Oh, and I have to stop and pull over and get out of the truck and just... So you went to a doctor, I assume, to see what was happening. Well, I was kind of stubborn about going because I was worried about losing everything, like the house and stuff, losing my job and stuff. And I, my wife convinced me and her family to go to the hospital. We were supposed to go to Niagara Falls for the weekend, mm -hmm. but my face coloring wasn't looking good. They said I looked really bad. Uh, my breathing was bad, um, so they convinced me to go to the emergency room. I'm glad uh, they did. Boy. Yeah. And it saved my life because I probably would have died eventually. Were both kidneys bad? Both of them are got bad, yeah. Wow. They said they both were not working. What, what, what's the likelihood with, with medicine in Canada that you will get a kidney transplant fairly soon. Um, I've already had a couple of offers for transplants. Uh, my mom has even offered to. Great, that's give great. Them. Yeah, uh, I was going to say relative. Sometimes you can live with uh, one kidney. So uh, I've had another. Uh, my friend's uh, cousin, who is younger than me, um, offered me a. a a kidney she's a type o negative blood i think which is a universal blood mm -hmm. um 
what there, there are more factors in getting a kidney. It's not just the blood type, mm -hmm. uh, but if it's if that's a good thing, then yeah, then she can do the testing and see if it if she's a full match. Okay. Because uh, I'm wow. not sure if I put my mom through the surgery because she's 74. Yeah, yeah. Of course, but you know, at her age, she could, I guess, if it if it's safe, if the operation is safe, could probably more afford to. You know, give up a kidney than 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 younger people just simply because she doesn't have a whole life ahead of her that she has to lead lead with one kidney. You get what yeah, I'm but saying? a lot of people, younger people, live with one kidney and live yeah. a normal life. Hell, take both of mine. You know. Just... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> take right. my kidney, please. You know. So uh, they're compatible. Yeah. So are you on dialysis right now as you're sitting there? Uh, no, I'm. Uh... My dialysis, I go in tomorrow morning to the hospital, mm -hmm. um, 8 o'clock, for about two to three hours, and then uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and then I have the weekends free. And, but when I do it at home, I'm not sure if it's going to be every day or not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they'll, they'll explain everything to me once I... Uh, well, we're, we'll, we're, we, everybody here, I'm sure, will be keeping yeah. out a good thought for you. you know? Right. Thank you. Uh, right. You know, I mean, boy. I saw the thing on the side of your face. I figured, you know, what what the hell is that? And what is it exactly? Yeah. It's a it's a tube connector. Oh, right I now, see. It's covered with gauze. Well, and, right now, they take this off. Yeah. And they, when I go into the hospital, they put the tube and yeah, the connector. What, why is it in your face? I am not sure why they put it up here. Um, I go on Friday. Well, everybody's wearing them, okay? It's the fashion. I have surgery to have the thing put in my chest. Yeah. And six weeks later, they'll put it to Catherine in my belly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, and and well. by the way, by the way, for those of you out there who say, Gee, you know, uh, when you have something go wrong in uh, Canada, uh, it takes forever, right, to get uh, get uh, taken care of. It wrong. Is, you know, it you went into time. you went into the hospital with this thing on what day when you first uh, decided uh, you Thursday, finally. Thursday. Hmm? Um, by Friday, uh, I was in Chatham, Ontario Hospital, mm -hmm. and they rushed me to London by ambulance. Um, See, so for anybody who says that in Canada it takes forever to get an operation, no, he no. hasn't got the operation yet. Well, he won't go bankrupt. That's the important thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. zero, zero, zero. Yep. Is there some this. kind of is there some kind of thing that federally you can get a kind of a, a stipend to take care of some of your financial uh, well, I needs? Apply for. Uh, Unemployment insurance mm -hmm. um, for medical leave, mm -hmm. and then get disability afterwards. Okay, does that pay okay? Uh, probably not quite as much as what I was making as a driver. Now wait a minute, you're saying not as much as you were making as a driver, but here in America you would say no. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So that's why you. Thank God he's. Not, I didn't know. I didn't think he was. I thought he was American. So I was going to say he's. Yeah, you'd be screwed. Yeah. No, he's Canadian, so he's not screwed. You know, but I'm sure he'd like to be earning a living, and uh, you know, he. You seem to enjoy the life on the road. You know. You know. Uh, yeah. Yes and no. You're getting tired of uh, it. Huh? I'm. I'm done. Mm. Uh, uh, even with if I get get healthy again, mm -hmm. I'm not going back. Get a uh, GoFundMe uh, uh, thing to help you out with expenses, and we can all donate to it. Absolutely. Uh, I haven't I haven't thought about that. Yeah, well, I mean, I it could be that you're going to be taken care of enough by by Canada, by the Canadian system. You know, uh, uh, somebody have their hand up there. Uh, yeah, yeah, Brian. I did. Oh, oh, okay. Well, let's go to Jeff first, and then let's go to Brian. Jeff? Well, I do, I'll just say that uh, my dad had dialysis and went through this whole 
system that you were talking about uh, in, the, in the United States. But, um, and he survived for, I would say, five years or something like that. But he was an older guy. He was not, you know, he was retiring at the same time. So uh, it, it, it's a very demanding problem to have to go three days a week. Yeah. Have them stick you in a pump and, and actually your blood is being refiltered through your whole system. Yeah. And you can't do anything else at the same time. So it's, it's it takes several hours. Well, you can read magazines. Maybe. <laughs> Don't be so, you know. Yeah. I'm sure they have television sets there. Yeah. And of course, a couple of umpires that have. You know, it's funny. One of my favorite shows on television, um, regular television, is a uh, uh, a show called uh, Be Positive. And the show is about a guy who finds out he has the problem that, you know, the trucker Steve here has, and that he's got to go through dialysis. Now, that is the premise for a comedy. And then. To make the premise for a comedy even more difficult, he falls in love with a woman who has terminal cancer. Why not? Uh, and the laughs ensue. And, but I felt that it was really brave of Chuck Lorre who did it, uh, who's one of television's best comedy producers, who did Big Bang Theory and so on, uh, that it was a very brave move to take that as a topic for comedy. Uh, and uh, every every show opens up with them all sitting around getting dialysis and this group of people getting dialysis and how they they've kind of bonded with each other and it's a very good show so I you know that's my what I know about you know dialysis is a, a show about dialysis yes uh, Alan Brian was first no oh, Brian excuse me I forgot Brian sorry that's I'm an funny. old man you have to remind me <laughs> well, I'm, I'll, I'll be 40 in February, so it'll be less than Europe way, but I'm in my fourth decade of existence. Oh, well, then you will, be, you will be almost half the age I am. Now, nevertheless, uh, <laughs> two questions. One was a more superficial one, but and, and I want to get to that. But first, uh, regarding uh, another follow-up. Uh, uh, God, am I losing my train of thought? Oh, you're worse than I am. Good. <laughs> I'll go back to me Oh, I remember. Uh, I remember. Uh, I understand, uh, Steve, that you are uh, uh, wanting to get out of the trucking industry. Does this mean you also want to get out of, uh, since you have a CDL, since you went through all that training, you, you can, if you do a career change, will it in any way, shape, or form dovetail with transportation, even if it is local? I haven't decided. I, I thought maybe... I don't know, maybe city bus work. How about dispatching? That too. In an office. Well, yeah, uh, I, 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 I've thought about that. Does your uh, wife? Does your wife work? Yeah, she works in an auto parts plant factory. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, let's see here. Who who had his hand up next? Yeah, Alan, and then back so, to Brian. So so. Don't get so depressed. I know it's a big shock right now, but it, in this country, I think around the world, uh, they have portable dialysis machines all over the place on cruise ships, all over the place. Well, on cruise yeah. ships, they so, need them for all those Altic you know. Yeah, well, they're all over eighty, so you know they're near death anyhow. So, um, <laughs> joke. So anyhow, but yeah. So in this country, and I'm sure once COVID's under control around the world your your life before you get your kidney will be pretty much normalized i mean it won't be the same but it'll be you know it's not like i mean it, it there's a lot of hope here let me and add yeah kidney yeah. transplants are done every day mm -hmm. around the world and i think once you get a a kidney other people can live with only one kidney and you can too no he yeah well he will only have one kidney but he, both of them are bad. Uh, but um, uh, uh, besides the fact that you have people who are willing to help you, um, uh, what are the, did they tell you what the line was, the weight was like for a kidney? Uh, 
It could be months down the road. It could be like six months. Okay, but it's there. There is a due date, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know you're probably feeling very depressed about this right now, but you're alive. That's the good news, and uh, I think you know you're going to find things are going to get better as time goes on. Uh, yes, uh, Charlie had his. Uh, can, well, Brian uh, let me, uh, Brian, first. Yes, Brian. This is a more superficial question. You can index this for later on in the show. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, changes down the road. No pun intended. Uh, the, I understand, Alex, I remember you saying a while ago, a few years ago, in fact, that you were uh, following a show called American Gods. Mm -hmm. I just watched the third season, the most recent season in the end. I had a theory I wanted to uh, bounce ideas off you for. Well, but can... uh, you can bring that up later. I, did, I only watched the first year. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, then that, wait, I found wait. the second year started to bore me a little bit. Okay. Know. So. All right. You know. Uh, yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, I just wanted to mention. Alan seems to be buying the propaganda from the U.S. health system. I, I mean, Alan seems to be. Uh, but but uh, I've got three umpires in the Austin Softball Umpire Association that have been waiting for three years or more on the kidney transplant wait list and they have to go in three times a week for dialysis so it's a lot worse here in the u.s than it is in canada i don't want to hear anybody bellyache to me about how bad medicine is in canada phil uh yeah. because it isn't because steve here is proof of that no you don't wait forever to see a doctor he went to a hospital. They said, you got two bad kidneys. We got to take care of you. They rushed him in an ambulance to a hospital that could take care of him. They did everything all over the weekend. Last Friday, you probably weren't even thinking about this happening, right? You know, and yet they were there on the spot. So don't let me hear from anybody out there that in Canada, you wait forever for a kidney operation or, or whatever, because it's just not true. Just not true. He's very well, fortunate that he lives in Canada. An answer to your earlier question with you and Phil, what is the dark web? It's the Republican National Committee, isn't it? <laughs> On yeah. our website, maybe, yeah. Yeah. According to Google, it's a parallel internet. I don't like to bring up Trump very often, but I will bring him up. Did you happen to see the thing Donald Jr. sent out? No. Of, uh, of uh, Donald riding the back of an eagle yeah. with wow. a shotgun in his hand and the and Mount Rushmore behind him with all the presidents wearing MAGA hats. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I, I no, hear I'm that telling you started the truth. to chisel in Mount Rushmore a picture of him and or, a, or carving of him. And, and if you stand back a ways, it looks like a penis. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, there was there was one president. There, how many presidents on Mount Rushmore? I think there were. Oh, there are four. Okay. I was wondering if one was missing in that picture. Um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I number one, I think that's a terrible thing of them to do, to Mount Rushmore, to have them all wearing MAGA hats. You know. And then the American Eagle with uh, Donald Trump riding it with a shotgun in his hand, and you're going, are you kidding me? You know. And they bitch and complain about Colin Kaepernick and other people kneeling in the national anthem, and they do this shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Sure. And on the 4th of July. Of course. You know. Um, but uh, if anybody wants to see it, you can go online probably and just, uh, you know. Yes, uh, uh, John. I love the way um, all the uh, right-wing talking heads are talking about uh, the black lady who um, is getting banned for smoking dope from the Olympics, you know, the, the yeah. sprinter. Yeah. And they're saying, well, you just got to follow rules. You have no. to follow the rules. But when it came, when it comes to getting fucking uh, COVID shots, it's like, nobody, we, we have the freedom with our body to do what we want. Like, what a bunch of fucking yeah, well, uh, it, the thing is that with a, a woman, I kept saying to myself, marijuana is legal almost everywhere yeah. in the United States cool. now. And the only thing that's wrong with her doing pot is that it might impede on her performance. 
other than that, there's nothing illegal about what she's doing, and and it it also I don't think it violates any any of their drug protocols. I mean, come on, you, if you're allowed to take aspirin, you should be allowed to smoke dope. Okay, what they don't want you taking are are any drugs that would enhance your performance. And I gotta tell you, marijuana ain't gonna enhance your performance at the oh. Olympics. As a matter of fact. You're just going to get hungry, run off the track, and go get a Big Mac, you know. If you look up the picture of that eagle, you see it's not an American eagle. It's a Russian eagle. It is? I'm kidding. I don't know. What is that uh, Olympic event with the, with the spears or the poles that they go? And is that it pole, pole, pole vaulting? vaulting? What's it called? Pole yeah. vaulting. Pole, pole vaulting. vaulting? So uh, maybe oh. uh, maybe Viagra would be considered, or Cialis would be considered a performance enhancing drug. Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, improve the performance of said event. You know? uh, Brian, you know, the pole it, it would help in pole vaulting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I have a friend who can testify to that. Yeah, I don't understand it, to be honest with you. I really don't understand it. Uh, because I, I just don't see where her performance is going to be enhanced by the smoking of, of weed. I can see how it might be degraded by using weed. I don't know about you, but when I smoke, I just, I smoke to, you know, I smoke, the only time I smoke marijuana at night is when I want to go to sleep. And I decide I don't want to take any of my pills. So I take some pot, and it puts me right to sleep. You know, I don't care. I can't imagine running. Well, I can't imagine running. Uh, but I can't imagine running on uh, on pot, you know. So I I don't understand the whole the whole thing. And my problem is if I smoke weed, I eat Big Macs all night long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I haven't smoked weed since I was a kid. Yeah. If I smoke if I smoke pot, I roll up in a fetal position in the bottom in the corner of my studio. <laughs> I become very withdrawn. Huh? Yeah. That, that's why, I like, I, 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 people always say to me, were you ever high doing your show? And I said, one night always. I smoked marijuana before I went on the radio. This was in Minneapolis. And somebody called up, and I was stoned, okay, and said, blah, 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 do you think blah, 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 blah. And my reply was, what the fuck do I care? <laughs> and then I had to push, we had a delay. I had to push the button on me. I said, well, I'm never going to smoke this shit before I do a show again, and I never did. You should have used one of my lines. What the fuck? What do I know? I'm just a fucking bus driver. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just a fucking DJ yeah. or a radio host. <laughs> How's everything with your health, Vernon driver. Nunn? Because Vernon Nunn had what I had. He had prostate cancer. Uh, not uh, a, not, not I, just had a, I just had Boy, a there's no of, secrets wait, on wait, this show. No. I, didn't, I just had a lot of heat today. Uh, Tuesday's my uh, volunteer day for Habitat, so yeah. I was out wiring two houses. Oh, jeez! And, and it got it got pretty hot, so we knocked off early. Yeah, you don't want to kill yourself. I mean, you want to. You, it's nice that you do Habitat for the humanities, but we don't want you killing yourself for it. Yeah, I think my wife would be a little pissed. I think it'd be a, <laughs> be a, a lousy way to die. Think of all that insurance money she would get. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Trucker Steve. You, you had a, li a life-threatening experience. You say you came that close, right? Did, it, did, it, did, it, did you stop to think about that afterwards? How close you came? Yeah. And, yeah, it was scary. Yeah, and how did you feel at the time? I don't know. I just um, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. It's kind of weird. I know it's kind of weird. Um, but do you, do you have kids, Steve? No. 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 So just a wife and Rocky. Yeah. That's right. Rocky's okay. my kid. I know. I get that. Yep. Rocky, a dog or a cat or what? Dog. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Cool. Very cool dog. Cool little black dog that used to black haired dog that would ride with him. Yeah. Uh, oh. After all that trucking, you think Rocky could drive for you? <laughs> <laughs> Do 
did uh, did Rocky seem concerned? No, not really. Well, you've spoiled that dog. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what's going on. Well, no. Well, I think we're all happy that you took care of yourself yeah. and that you're still here, Steve. Yeah. And we think, and we, I'm sure we all wish you. I certainly do, and I'm sure everybody else does the best. And uh, I think you'll be okay. I don't think we've, had, you know, tonight, uh, Phil. But you usually calls me about five minutes before I go on the air, or as I just as I start playing the commercials and stuff, the uh, the ads, and uh, he's waiting in the wings to go on. And tonight, when I was through playing the theme song, he wasn't there. Lucky us. And, I mean, no, oh, I'm sorry. What a horrible <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> no, I was worried. I was genuinely worried about him. Uh, as, as one of the people who has faced certain, you know, problems uh, physically, uh, I worried about him that, you know, maybe if, if he died, I wouldn't hear about it, you know? Oh, yeah, you would. And and if, if some of you hadn't died, like, you know, I'm sure Brian Neary hasn't called tonight, but I think he's probably still alive. But, you know, if, he, if something happened to any of you, I wouldn't really know. I might hear about Jeff, you know, um, and certainly if I didn't appear anymore, you'd just know that it was all over, you know. But uh, uh, I don't think we've had anybody on this program die, with the exception of my ex-wife Ronnie, who I used to do as an interview here, but that was it, you know, she never called into the program. So I can't say it was one guy that did. Yeah. Who? I can't remember. I can't remember his name. O'Brien just wrote on the chat room, he I'm alive. Well, he says I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well we figured you are, Brian, because I heard that from rock heard person? something like that. Mm-hmm. Somebody named Rock mm-hmm. I heard from him on uh, Monday, uh beca- on our Monday show, uh because he uh called in from uh, the beach or something with his daughter. I believe it was Monday he called, so I have seen him. Yes, uh, Brian, the other Uh, Brian. Regarding what Charlie said about somebody who used to call in here who has since passed on, uh, I want to say that the name John Rockwell comes to mind. Oh, yes, yes, of course. And how could I I forget him because I knew him for years before he ever came on here. He used to work together, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, he used to work for me at Midnight Blue. Yeah. What's your big secret that you were going to tell everybody today? I didn't say today. I said next or the twelfth. I know, uh, but Phil you, was. You were trying sure. to. You were trying. Phil. Phil, Phil no. was absolutely sure it was going to be today, and I told them, "Nope, it's next week." Yeah. Um, 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 yeah. It was. It's next week. Right. The, the reason he's listening. To Phil the show already to knows. I told Phil. I know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you told them, but. He said, oh, he's going to disclose it today. And I said, no, it's next week. You know, no, it's next week. No, it's next week. Today. The only reason is, is that the announcement is going to be made on the 12th or something. What day of the week is the 12th? Monday. Monday, Monday. yeah. So, Monday 12th. So I guess I can probably, I'll tell it to the 4 o'clock audience. Uh, <laughs> All right. You know. Everybody has to call in at 4 o'clock on Monday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be the first to know. Alex, do you remember that lady who used to uh, be on the radio right after you? Yes. Uh, but what's her name? Oh, uh, Randy her. Rhodes? No, not Randy Rhodes. Miranda? Uh, no, no, no. Stephanie no, no, Miller. No, no, no. Not Stephanie Miller. She, he means on Sirius XM. Yeah. Uh, oh, Liz, what's her no, name? No, no, no. Lynn. 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 Lynn, that's what it was, Lynn. Yeah, Lynn. Lynn Samuels. Lynn Samuels. Lynn Samuels. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, her death was, uh, I went into mourning on that one. Oh, yeah, not. Um, she was a miserable human being. She was a whack job. She, no, she was, no, you know, some people on the air play a miserable human being, and off the air you say, you know, really very nice person. <laughs> well, you never said that about Lynn Samuel. You know, you, you had to keep yourself from using the word cunt, okay? 
Um, See you next Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she um, uh, was just, uh, I'll tell you how, how terrible she was. They asked me on my program to do a memorial for her on the show. And I'm thinking to myself, you're coming to the worst guy, because she used to just hate me. Okay, you're coming to the worst guy to do a memorial, but okay, we'll put something together. And I'll sound sincere, because my feeling is, if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, we do the show, and they, we, one of the guests, by phone, is her sister, and I bring her on, and I say, hello, this is, uh, this is uh, Lynn's sister, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I said, how do, you, how do you feel about it? She says, I couldn't care less. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? Yep. She said, Lynn was the most miserable human being I've ever known in my life. You know, so I can't sit here and feel sorry. And I went, well, if she can't feel sorry, I don't have to, <laughs> you know? I mean, the one person that should feel sorry is her sister, right? No. She said she's just a miserable human being, and people should know that. And we knew that, you know. It was very sad. Yeah. I didn't get to say goodbye to her, you know, whatever. But you know what happened? Did she do her show from a studio in her apartment? Yes. She kept wanting to do a show from her apartment. She, she was doing a COVID show before there was COVID, okay? Yeah, sure. And and so here here she comes doing her show on uh, from her home, and on a Friday Saturday, which she she did Saturday and Sundays were her shows, in the end, and it, it was Saturday and it was her show, and they flipped the switch to turn go to her, and there's nothing there, and then they. They play some. I don't know what they did. They vamped or they played a recording or something like that, and they kept trying to call her and there was no answer. So they tried for about two days, and finally they decided to send the cops in to see if she was okay. And they knock on the door and there's no answer. So they break down the door and they go in and there she is, stiff as a board, drop dead. She was there for two days before anybody knew or really cared that she was dead. Um, and I suppose if she had a catch, they, half of her would be gone, you know. But uh, she was dead for two days before they, uh, they found her. And, uh, wow. Uh, that shows you how many friends she had that nobody knew she was dead. Yeah. Wow. So that's my Lynn's, Lynn Samuels story. Yeah, mm -hmm. people keep mentioning John Rockwell, John Rockwell. I felt really bad about that one. I'm glad you guys remembered. I had somehow forgotten that John had called the show a lot. And uh, I, I always liked John. He was a sweet guy. And we'd always said we were going to get together and hang out, and we never did it. And so, what the hell. So we, they held a memorial for him, and I went to that. And, you know, a lot of people showed up. It was very nice. Very nice. And... Uh, Hello to Brian Neary. Hi, Brian. I'm alive. Those were some cute pictures of that kid of yours. Yeah, she had a blast. Yeah. And the other two did too. They're they're very shy and quiet, and they actually met my friends' kids, and mm -hmm. uh, we had a great time. So eight families. There was eight of us that used to hang out together. Now we all have families, two or three kids. So we all had uh, camping spots yeah. and. RVs and all that stuff, and took boats out and jet skis and drank in the water. Not drank the well, water. All the all the pictures you sent me of her, at least the two of the pictures you sent me of her, she was asleep in yeah. the boat. <laughs> now, you're supposed to be the one who falls asleep, not her. No, I was the first one up every day, five thirty. When the sun comes up, I, I was up. What you do? Really exhaust yourself, like swimming and things like that. Yeah, yeah, she was swimming and doing everything she could. Yeah, she was having a blast. So yeah, she, it, looked, it, she yeah. looked like she was having a great time. Yeah, uh, and it's good to see Simon and Stephanie talking and hanging out and laughing. Yeah. It's hard to get them together, but now 
now you know like my friend has super bowl parties and all these things and when they've come they've just been shy now they actually have good friendship mm -hmm. that they start forming this weekend so it's really nice well as the kids get older they get sociable too you know yeah i just yeah. got a note from um, um jack bishop that he might not be able to do a show tonight because his internet he's having internet problems at least that's what it says here internet yeah. modem problems can't turn it get off on turn it back on can he hear us he probably yeah. can't hear us well let's see here if maybe he has an iPhone, a phone iphone he could use that um a jack just um by the way, uh, just uh, um, he's right. Turn the modem on and off. <clears throat> did you remember that South Park? They did a yes. whole episode when the the city was was like turning. What Brian? The, the like the whole city was like generating down. All the power was going out and everything, and they finally made it to the modem. Hey Brian, do you Brian, do you remember the spooky ghosts? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But they finally made it to the mode. But they finally made it to the modem, like Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. He said, "Turn it off," and then turn it back on. And they <laughs> did it, and then all the power came back on, saved the whole South Park. So, well, that's a, you know, that's the one thing. thing I always tell Marjorie. She, Alex, it isn't working. I say, "Did you turn it on and off?" No. <laughs> what do I tell you to do when something doesn't work? You turn it down, off. And then you turn it back on. And then if it's not working, come call me. Okay? Today, today, all of a sudden, she did some, I don't know, I think she turned some switch on and off. Anyway, I've got these little uh, plugs that have a Wi-Fi in them. And then I can just tell Alexa to turn the lights on and off. Uh, for instance, in here, wait a minute, let me, let me show you this just so you can see. I'll turn these lights off. Okay, so you can't you can't see me now. Echo, turn off office. <clears throat> see, yeah. and those Echo, are all... turn on office. <laughs> <laughs> Echo, turn off all power at Alex's house. Echo, turn on wife. Uh, turn Echo, off wife. Echo, <laughs> file divorce. <laughs> Echo, turn on <laughs> office. There we go. You, you didn't see them come on because I'm using the green screen and these lights here and so on. But um, I've got, so she, we have this plug and it just wasn't working. It just wasn't re getting close, working with the Wi Fi or whatever. So I was spending a half hour trying to fix this thing because it's a matter of programming it. And so finally I put it really close to the modem and it finally did it. But it took me like a half hour, and she's sitting there watching tennis. And I'll tell you, there's nothing more annoying when you're trying to fix something <laughs> than hearing a TV set at full volume going, bah, bah. <laughs> and occasionally uh, with some players, it's... Uh, it's you forgot the grunt. Uh, there you uh, go. Now we're lucky because it's the French Open, and it's clay court. Once we get to uh, Wimbledon, it's bah, squeak, squeak. Uh, <laughs> squeak so That's uh, why I can't watch men's tennis yeah I men's tennis okay <laughs> oh, by the way men. Josh Wheeler on our chat just said just saying Charlie? hello from the harbor at Duluth Minnesota where I'm watching the big freighters roll in couldn't call but hoping to on Friday night so that's from Josh who's mm -hmm. out there on the highways and byways of America on vacation Worst time to be on the highways and byways of America, right, Steve? <laughs> I mean, the the traffic has got to be terrible, you know. Um, it's back in Austin. It is bad in Austin, yeah, but you you would back. you wouldn't know. You never leave the house. No, but I had to do some umpire training last week. I had to go out. Yeah, uh, but how do you train an umpire? Very careful. No. <laughs> yeah, you, you, get, you, you go over the rules with them. You show them the mechanics, the motions they have to. There's a certain way you have to move to make an out call or a safe call. Show them how to get in position. Okay. To make oh, call. okay. All right. Uh, I I just uh, swung <laughs> and, and, and I'm out. Give give me the sign. 
I don't really have room in here. One sign is just to go out like that. But, you know, well, that's like if it's a routine play. You know, a guy's out about 30 feet. How about, how about a strike? What do you do? It's the same thing. So you don't have to teach much at all. You just, I, I just learned it all. Strike three. Everybody's got their own strike three call, man. Yeah. I mean, I do a backflip and then a little dance. And <laughs> Do you do a backflip? No. <laughs> no, not really. Show us. Everybody's got to do it. I'm not going to do it here. I'm Wait, what does the t-shirt say? I agree with you, but when... Then we both be wrong. I agree with you, but then we both be wrong. <laughs> Where do you find these T-shirts? All I ever find are these things that tell my age. You know, they're on Facebook. The, the ads come up all the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but you're really you're really good at it. You know. I guess I got nothing. Else you're better to do than about. Sheldon on uh, on Big Bang Theory. <laughs> you know, he's got about five twenty different Flash T-shirts on yep. that show. They supposedly put a different T-shirt on him every week on that show. When they were doing, it. I believe it. Uh, and uh, John Larkin, what did you do over the Fourth of July? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't. I don't have nothing to do. I mean, um, um, I didn't feel like doing anything either. You know, just yeah. take it easy. Well, I made the big mistake of saying to. Uh, Marjorie on I think it was Sunday or maybe it was f fr uh, Thursday uh, Saturday because it was good walking weather it wasn't too hot but it wasn't too cool either it was just right it wasn't very humid yeah. I said do you want to go walk with me and she said sure and yeah. now we are going on the death march to Bataan <laughs> because she can't just take a walk you know I like to stroll Take it easy, walk down the street, maybe walk up a couple of flights of stairs, you know, on the way, get some exercise, right? No, she says we go off into the woods. I go, okay, well, there's a little path here. And I said, now when we get here, we can go down the stairs and then we can go around the lake, right? And she goes, no, let's just keep going up this way. Well, she knows it's the highest hill in all of Central Park. And I'm, we're going up the hill. I mean, I had to, she said, you know, we can turn here and go back down the hill. And I said, no, we're going to the top of the hill. And I made it to the top of the hill. But it was like the death part march from Bataan. You can see the top of the hill because I did it on live on FaceTime. And if you go to the FaceTime page, it's, it's there. But uh, it was, it was, it was, a, it, I was exhausted. After we were through, we did about, what was it, two miles, I think it was, total, or maybe two and a half miles, and, uh, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was, but I was very proud, because I didn't give up, I wasn't going to give up to her, right, no, we're going to go to the top of the hill no matter what, says I, okay. So you live close to Central Park? Yeah, yeah, I'm about, uh, we're at 16th, uh, Central Park is at 110th, the beginning of it, the top of it. Uh, so we're, we're six blocks away from it. And, <laughs> and I walk down there and then I walk around the lake and I see, I think there's some stairs to go up and I climb up the stairs, you know. I do, I, I, I do a little bit of exercise that way. And every day, I, uh, today I didn't do it because it was 95 fucking degrees out there. Oh, no shit. It's funny ball sack weather, as I call it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I'd, I she wanted, she said, would you go down and get coleslaw? I said, fuck you. I'm not getting coleslaw in this weather. Are you kidding me? It'd be hot slaw by the time you get back. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going down yeah. to get coleslaw. Uh, so I, I, didn't, I didn't leave the house. I wasn't about ready to take a walk today. But I've been pretty good about it. I, every day that it's reasonable, I take a walk. I take it. You're, do a, at least. you're a fair weather walker. No, I do. I do about a mile to two miles every day. It depends on where I go. I'm getting tired of the same old route that I go. You know, so. Go uh, through the bad neighborhoods then. Yeah, that'll keep you busy. <laughs> that'll keep you well, on your no, feet. No, no, I don't want to go through the bad neighborhoods. Because I'm not into running. That was my point. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know what happened here? This was funny. 
uh, needless to say, I am in the I am in Harlem, and in Harlem there are a lot of uh, 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 black people armed with uh, fireworks. Uh, and uh, you know what I'm where I'm going with this, Charlie. Uh, they start blowing off fireworks, and that's fine. Ten o'clock at night, eleven o'clock. Eh, well, you're pushing it now. Midnight, I'm sorry, that should be the cutoff point, but no, it's three o'clock in the morning, and they're blowing those things out there. Is yeah, it, no is it wrong important. for me to assume that in Harlem it's black people blowing off fireworks, Charlie? <laughs> is it, is, Georgia has the same people. Is, is it reasonable? Okay, <laughs> okay. I got it from our official black guy here. It's reasonable, okay? Well... What was it the other night around? They were blowing them off like crazy. It was on the 4th of July. Blowing them off like crazy. And I say, let the kids do it till midnight. Or well, about 1, 12.30, I look down, and all of a sudden, the cops have shown up. And they've got a big paddy wagon. They're ready for them. And they're looking around the neighborhood. And all of a sudden, no more fireworks. The word got out. The cops were there. They were arresting people, and you better not do it. Uh, and I went to bed that night, and I said, "I don't hear a single." This is the Fourth of July. I don't. There's not a single fireworks display going up in the air. And I'm. I want to find these guys and go. You know, the Macy's one is much better. <laughs> you know, uh, and also, how smart can you be when you're willing to spend hundreds of dollars? just to blow things up. But anyway, it was very quiet. And then all of a sudden, three o'clock in the morning, I don't know what this guy had, but mm -hmm. all I could say that if it were a bomb, it would be about this big, okay? And I heard the most earth-shattering explosion, followed by another one, as though it was one of these guys saying to the cops, fuck you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But outside of that, it got very silent. Yes, Brian and then Alan. Well, two things. One is if you want to commit a crime by shooting a firearm, uh, Fourth of July would be the perfect time to do it. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, every time this happens every year around this time, I'm always harking back to the uh, classic Simpsons episode in the fourth season in which the uh, Middle Eastern guy says to Homer during their vacation, what better way to celebrate your country's independence than by blowing up a part of it? <laughs> yes, Alan. Just after he purchases illegal fireworks. Alan. So, uh, the news today at the, in the San Francisco paper is the biggest illegal fireworks show was two blocks from the Mission Station Police Department. Really? In San Francisco. Yeah. It was big enough that I was driving north on 101 going into the city at 10 o'clock at night. And along 101 on Southbound, everybody had pulled over to the side of the road to watch the fireworks display in the mission for free. The illegal fireworks display. The illegal fireworks display. It was pretty spectacular. It's pretty, right? it, 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 well, listen, it's pretty. Some, Two blocks from the police. Some of them are pretty spectacular, but, you know, yes. I'm sorry. I think, isn't a good a cutoff time midnight? You know, Absolutely. It, yeah. what are you saying I to the, completely. after midnight, you're saying to your, uh, the people who live there. Uh, live next to you. Fuck you. That's really uh, what you're saying. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, That's got to stop. Yeah. The show's yeah. over? Yes. The show's yes. over? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quick. Yeah, yeah Brian. Well, hopefully, uh, uh, Jack got his internet running or I'm going to be really depressed. Well, yeah, really. get really depressed. I don't know. I'll wait and see if, it come, if he comes on. If he doesn't come on, that's it. You know, I'll, I'll just, I'll play one of his old shows. Anyway, hey, listen, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Good having you here. Good having you here, Alan. Uh, Vernon, didn't say much tonight, but, boy, we I love seeing you here. Love, love knowing you're here. It makes me feel good. Uh, Charlie Wallace always makes me feel good. We're, we got the best th think thoughts going out for you, uh, Steve, and if you can, call us and keep us abreast of what's happening. But thank God you're alive and well, and... Uh, you know, uh, because I Thank can't you. I can't afford to lose a listener, and that's the selfish part of me. But uh, and then all the Russian prostitutes <laughs> want to be friends. Yeah. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, John Larkin. And thank you to Brian Neary. I always, whenever I see you there, I know life is okay. Anyway, and I'm alive. everybody, give a big wave goodbye, good and I'll get, give a big wave goodbye to you as well, okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, uh, and we'll form another one like crust on bread tomorrow night, same time, uh, same station in life. I don't know if there's going to be Jack Bishop's intersection next. I have no idea, but if there is, and I'll put something on here eventually. Uh, in the meantime, as always, and I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same... Oh, by the way, we have a sports show tonight, tomorrow night, at 8.30 with Franchise MC. It's a good little sports show if you've never heard it. How would I know? What do I know? Sports. Anyway, uh, but it is great. And I will see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And for those of you who haven't gotten vaccinated yet, God damn it, go out and do it. Nighty night, everybody.